Welcome back to the Ring of Knowledge, your trusted source of practical financial knowledge. Proof of work and proof of stake are the two commonly used consensus protocols for blockchain. Both algorithms have advantages and disadvantages, but which one is better overall? Is one better than the other or are they interchangeable? In this video, I explore what they mean in technical terms and how they work. If you're interested in taking a deeper dive into cryptocurrency, proof of stake versus proof of work is a topic you need to understand. This video will discuss proof of work versus proof of stake. What's the difference? Let's take a look. What is proof of work and how does it work? Proof of work or POW is not new to the Bitcoin industry. When Bitcoin was first introduced in 2009, it had this feature already integrated into the blockchain. When new transactions are submitted to a blockchain, other computers in the network must verify and approve them before any new blocks can be created and added to the blockchain. To verify and validate blockchain transactions, proof of work necessitates using computational resources to solve cryptographic riddles. It's called mining cryptocurrency, and it's like a race. The idea is that a long string of numbers and letters, called a hash, can protect against attacks from bad people and confirm that a transaction is legitimate. The blockchain's transactions are predicted on data sent through a network function, which can only produce a single hash. When a transaction occurs on the blockchain, such as when one user sends Bitcoin to another, the resulting hash is broadcast to all nodes in the network. It would be noticed and rejected if someone tried to change the hash. Proof of work lets the blockchain stay trustless which means that no third party is needed to check or manage the transactions. Proof of work, especially in the way it is used for the Bitcoin network, is the best way to develop an asset. Someone had to spend time and work on it, and sometimes this is the literal conversion of energy into value. That's why it's such a strong foundation for Bitcoin's value. What is proof of stake and how does it work? The validators in a POS network are the people who control some of the coins that are part of the blockchain. The proof of stake protocol selects a validator at random, with some weight given to the number of coins the candidate has staked or locked up on the blockchain. The coins are used as collateral, and a participant, a node, is rewarded for verifying a transaction when they are selected. Proof of stake needs more than one validator to agree that a transaction is correct before it goes through. Once enough nodes agree, the transaction goes through. Proof of stake uses a lot less energy. There isn't enough energy in the world to power a decentralized financial ecosystem on that scale that Ethereum and other blockchains want. When using proof of stake instead of proof of work, it can be hard to keep the security and decentralization that POW provide. For decentralized Decentralized finance, or DeFi, to work in the long run, the POS model needs to be safe, fast, and able to handle real-time transactions. Which cryptocurrencies use proof-of-stake? Proof-of-stake is becoming more common as a way for cryptocurrency users to agree on something. About 80 different cryptocurrencies use POS as their way to reach a consensus. These are some of the most well-known coins that use proof-of-stake. Number 1, Cardano, or ADA. Number 2, Tron, TRX. Number 3, EOS. EOS. Number four, Cosmos, Atom. And number five, Tezos, XTC. Proof of stake and proof of work blockchains. Bitcoin is the most well-known platform that operates on proof of work, POW. However, other blockchains such as Bitcoin Cash, Dogecoin, Monero, and Litecoin all use proof of work to validate transactions. In the end, both proofs of work and proof of stake will continue to be utilized. Other solutions like Solana validate transactions via a process known as proof of history. Proof of work and Bitcoin will continue to play an essential role. However, proof of employment cannot serve as the foundation for a functioning monetary system. You need evidence of the stakes and history for all of it. What is the difference between proof of work and proof of stake? Along with the way miners' transactions are validated, there are two other big differences between the methods. The amount of energy used and the chance of an attack. Energy consumption. One of the most significant distinctions between proof of stake and proof of labor is the amount of electricity consumed. The high amount of electricity required is a major point of contention for those who oppose cryptocurrencies. The authentication model used by proof of work requires high-powered computers which results in much higher energy consumption. For instance, according to estimations provided by the University of Cambridge, 
Bitcoin, whose mining process is based on the concept of proof of work, utilizes around 0.39% of the total yearly electricity consumption of the entire world. Bitcoin mining consumes a greater amount of electricity annually than both Finland and Belgium combined. The Ethereum network is currently in the process of moving to a proof of stake consensus model. The Ethereum Foundation believes that this switch will reduce energy consumption by around 99.95%. Because proof of stake uses a random selection process to determine validators rather than requiring miners to solve complicated puzzles, a huge energy reduction is consumed. Additionally, transaction times are shortened, resulting in reduced energy consumption. Risk of attack Miners have to compete with one another to solve equations after they have proof of labor. Once a miner obtains a block from the blockchain, the rest of the system depends on that miner's compliance with the rules and reliability. If one group of miners manages to obtain control of more than half of the network, they will be able to prevent transactions from being completed and will also be able to spend coins twice, which is a form of fraud known as double spending. Proof of stake is unique in that it restricts miners' abilities to validate blocks to only those who have made a stake, similar to a security deposit. If the assailants engage in dishonest practices, they will forfeit their stake, because attackers can only take coins or double spend coins without losing their investment. There is no practical profit for them to disrupt the blockchain and the cryptocurrency they are targeting. Why do cryptocurrencies need proof? The US dollar, the Chinese yuan, and the European euro all have one thing in common. They are centralized currency. A central bank makes them, and branch banks give them to the public. From a technical point of view, a dollar is not worth anything. What you can get in exchange for a dollar is what determines its worth, not whether you can eat, drink, or wear it. For instance, for one dollar, you might be able to buy a small snack. So, one dollar buys a snack. $2 buys two snacks, and so on. In use, cryptocurrencies are the same. In 2010, a programmer from Florida named Laszlo Hayek used 10,000 Bitcoin to buy two pizzas. At the time, Bitcoin was worth that much. With this money now, you can get a lot more pizzas. 10,000 Bitcoins were worth about $200 million. The point is that Bitcoin's value is not based on the technology itself, but on what you get in exchange. The main difference between Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the US dollar is that a central bank issues neither one. A single state or other organization does not control cryptocurrencies. Instead, the money is printed and regulated by a network of computers. One big problem with this approach is how we keep fraudsters from abusing decentralized systems. Let's say, for example, that you have 100 Bitcoin. You want to use this money to buy a nice house in Florida that you've seen. The house is worth about 100 Bitcoin, or about 2 million. You're happy, so you buy it. You find out a few months later that the house next door is for sale for 2 million. This house is even nicer than the one you just moved into. You don't want to give up your own house, so you also use the same 100 Bitcoin to buy the neighboring house. After all, no one from the bank is watching. This so-called double spend problem would destroy all faith in a currency. If you can buy things worth 200 bitcoins by spending the same 100 bitcoins twice, you could buy those things by spending one bitcoin 200 times. That is, you can buy anything with a small amount of money. Everyone else would do the same thing. So soon, there would be a lot of fighting over who owns what. People eventually decide that the currency is worthless because it leads to fights. Loss of trust has happened. This problem only comes up sometimes when the government makes money. States don't just give out money, they also have police who can arrest you for fraud. But there are no police in decentralized cryptocurrency systems like Bitcoin and Ethereum. There is no one in charge of making sure that justice is done. Then, one needs something else to avoid the problem of spending twice. A kind of proof that a transaction is real and that no coin is being spent twice. In the language of cryptography, this kind of proof is called a consensus protocol. Pros and cons of POW Proof of work is a more decentralized way to verify transactions on a blockchain because it needs more computers and people across the networks to review and approve transactions. Many crypto purists and fans think that the less centralized the system is, the better. But on the other hand, more computers mean more energy use. Over the past year or so, as more people have become interested in the industry, there has been more interest and scrutiny in how cryptocurrency mining affects the environment. The complexity and higher entry barrier are mostly by design, and they help stop hacks and attacks, which are another problem in the crypto market. Proof of work means slower speeds and a higher chance of harming the environment, making it less popular in the crypto industry. It's just not useful for some of the ways that blockchain could be used. Pros and cons of POS Experts claim that proof of stake has several advantages over proof of work. Its faster transaction speeds and lower energy needs 
make blockchains more scalable, making it easier for new users to use them. On top of that, proof of stake allows you to earn more cryptocurrency. You can put your coins in a liquidity pool and get more coins back as a reward. A proof of stake network gives more chances to make money and join a financial system than a proof of work network. Experts say that you should be careful about which cryptocurrencies you invest in, even though the rewards can sometimes be good. As the cryptocurrency market is still in its infancy, many coins, especially smaller altcoins that may offer greater staking rewards, have a larger possibility of collapsing. Which is better, proof of stake or proof of work? Proof of work and stake are both important parts of the crypto world. People have been arguing about which one is better for years, but there is still no clear answer. Many of the altcoins that came out after Bitcoin use proof of stake and have been relatively stable and have had lower costs for the environment. But some critics worry that proof of stake could make it easy for people to concentrate power in a field where decentralization is a core value. If you have more proof of stake cryptocurrency, you have more control over the system. Having a lot of power in one place can be risky for proof of work cryptocurrencies. For example, if a person or a group controls more than 50% of the mining power of a blockchain, they can change its records or make it useless. This is called a 51% attack. But this is just one of the many things you can think about when deciding whether or not to invest in a cryptocurrency. So, before you decide, you should find out what a cryptocurrency is meant to do, if it does that right, and if many people use it. What does it all mean for investors in cryptocurrencies? The difference between proof of work and stake is less significant for the average crypto investor to examine, as many other fundamental metrics and factors. Investors who want to make informed choices about which cryptocurrencies to put their money into and which ones to avoid can benefit from looking at things like the trading history, market capitalization, and the price of a cryptocurrency. Suppose you want to invest smartly in cryptocurrency, according to the advice of financial experts. In that case, you should limit your exposure to this asset class to less than 5% of your overall portfolio. Avoid investing in cryptocurrency if doing so will prevent you from building and maintaining a robust emergency fund, and avoid investing in cryptocurrency if it will prevent you from paying down high interest debt such as credit card or personal loan debt. Proof of work and stake are two ways cryptocurrencies decide which new blocks to add to their blockchains. They all solve the basic problem of verifying transactions without using a central authority. Proof of stake is a way to reach a consensus by making people put their money behind a new block they want to be added to the cryptocurrency's blockchain. On the other hand, Proof of work gets people to agree by making them use computer power and electricity to make a new valid block. Proof of work has the benefit of making it very costly to attack a cryptocurrency's network, but it also has a growing negative impact on the environment. Proof of stake uses less energy than proof of work, and it isn't as safe and stable at scale as proof of work. So that's all for today's video. If you like this video, click the like and the bell buttons. We'll have another video for you soon. Take care until then.